and happy Thanksgiving. We're glad that you're joining with us today. We'd like to begin our service with a special video reminding us to thank God and praise him for all he has done. Please watch this video of Psalm 100 and then we'll continue singing together. Please stand with us and let's sing together. Yeah. 
Please be seated. Before uh, Tyler comes up and pray, I just had a couple quick uh, board announcements. So for one, I didn't know that today was uh, National Pastors Day. So it was brought to my attention that, uh, you know, we should, uh, you know, say something nice <laughs> about you. So in today's society, it's good to, to check your source. So I kind of am like, okay, where did this come from? So I look it up. And it brings me to this website, you know, stephenchain.org, where it originated. So, <laughs> But I, I don't need a special day to give thanks for all that you do. But on behalf of the board, we do want to acknowledge, you know, the time and, uh, and everything that you put in to this church and relocating your family and, and, and now getting used to a new community and, and putting that time in. But So we do recognize that, and uh, we just want to give thanks for that. <laughs> Second board update. Next week, um, we're doing the, uh, the offering to, uh, to, to, to see what we can do when it comes to the phase two, phase three on the, uh, on the renovation. And so... As a board, um, this was a big thing to try and, you know, pull the trigger to get something going. And so, so we were able to do that with the funds that we had uh, with us at the time, and that was part of phase one. So, but you guys, we, we've listened, and we know that um, it is definitely easier to do it um, while we're in renovations right now. And so that's that's why we're gonna we're gonna see what the Lord has in store. We're uh, we're challenging us as a congregation and to see what we're able to do. Um, I was here for all the other renovations. So this section, the north wing and the west wing. And uh, um, if you're in the position that I was in back then, you know, I was in college or younger and you, there just was no ability to give at that time. So I want to make sure that don't feel guilty if you can't contribute monetary. There are other ways to help. Definitely prayer support as we as a board continue to make sure that uh, it all fits in our vision. But I am extremely pleased with how it's coming so far and I'm looking forward to what the Lord is, is going to do. Um, it was 18 years ago today actually. Andrew and I, we got married at the front of that uh, in front of the church there and I, I remember we had to figure out what the bridesmaids were going to wear, their color of dress and, and the men's vest so that it didn't clash with the blue carpet. So <laughs> that the fact that that's going is, is uh, definitely an encouragement. It would be nice to see the overhang go too. Um, Lil Boudreaux used to teach Sunday school back then, and that's where I had my class with Lil way up there. Um, that was our Sunday school room before we, we added things in. So anyway... There's a lot of memories here, and uh, I'm just really looking forward to everything that we can do when it comes to that. So next week, uh, I think, is going to be an exciting, an exciting day. And it should be something that you should be proud of and excited for, uh, that we've worked uh, a lot for this. And it's going to be amazing to see what God does. Tyler? Well, happy anniversary, John and Andrea. Uh, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for what we've heard there already this morning, Lord. We are thankful for you. We're thankful for that, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us on the cross and to be raised to life again so that we could experience new life ourselves. We know that it was a huge sacrifice and that you didn't have to do it, but you did it because you loved us, because you're, because you're so good, and because of your great compassion for your people who you created. 
So, Father, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your immense, reckless love that you've given us, Lord God. That you've, you've loved us so much to call us back to yourself. To make a way where there was no way. Father, we're also thankful for our pastor, Steve, as John already had said, and we're thankful for his leadership. We're thankful for the messages that he brings us. Lord, in this morning, I just pray that you would just be with him as he gives us another one of his messages, but your words, Lord God. Father, we are thankful for this congregation that we're able to gather together in this place, in this gym, while our sanctuary is being renovated. Father, I'm thankful for the men who are renovating the sanctuary and staying safe while doing so. I just pray that you would bless the men that are working on the sanctuary, Lord God, all the things that have to come together with the construction and the electrical and the plumbing and all the things that we don't get to see, Lord God. So, Father, just be with that project, Lord. And we just pray over next Sunday, Lord God, already, that those people, that we would prayerfully consider, Lord, what are you calling us to for next Sunday, how we can contribute into continuing to finish that to completion. Father God, we think of those who around the world who are can or cannot gather this morning. Father, we think of those who are being persecuted for their faith. Lord God, we think of Israel this morning who's being bombed by Hamas. Father God, we just pray for your protection over your people. Lord God, we know that there's an ugly situation, but we also know that you had promised that this would happen in your word, Lord God. So we're not surprised, but our heart cries out to them, Lord. We want your people to be safe. We don't want your people to go through any of the devastation that they're going through right now, women and children and men being blown out of their homes, Lord God. Father, protect them. Keep them safe. Father God, find a, that you would make a way where there is no way to provide safety for them. Father God, we thank you for those who need an extra special touch this morning, Lord God. Father, we're, we ask that you would be with them, Lord God, those that are hurting um, physically, Lord God, those that have been through surgeries or are waiting to go through surgeries, Lord God, or those that haven't been diagnosed yet that are si suffering in silence, Lord God, because they think it's just, it's okay, it all, I'll get over it. But Lord God, would you heal them this morning by your hand, by your mighty outstretched hand, Lord God, would you touch them, heal them. Lord God, for those that are struggling with mental illness, would you touch them, Lord God? Would you heal them? Would you bring them whole again like only you can, Lord? Father God, we, we praise you. We thank you for our tithes and offering that are going to be collected this morning, Lord God. We ask you that you would further it for your kingdom, for your glory, and for your honor, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Well, it is Pastor Appreciation Day. I didn't even know that until I showed up this morning. <laughs> and, uh, and I've been thanked, but I just want to acknowledge the incredible team that we have here at the church. For Tyler, for Tracy, for Becca, for Martha, for Fred, for our cleaners. We have a, a wonderful staff at this church, and um, I appreciate them very, very much as well. <laughs> Amen. Let's bow our hearts in a word of prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful as we gather in this place this morning. Thankful for all that you have done. Thankful for who you are. Thankful, Father, for this opportunity to come and to worship you and to look into your word and freedom. We thank you, Lord, for the breath in our lungs. We thank you, Lord, for the bodies that you've given to us. Imperfect as we may be, Father, we recognize that you are so good. Truly, Lord, you are so good. So, Father, as we look into your word, we pray, Father, remind us again of the importance of giving thanks and help us to be a thankful people. For we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but have you ever met anyone who just seemed impossible to please? Just impossible to please? Heard this story of a guy that was at a butcher shop, and in walks this great big German shepherd dog, has a purse in his mouth, and the dog gets in line, and he waits, and he gets right up to the counter, and then he puts the, the purse down and goes, woof, and the butcher behind the cabinet looks down and says, oh, okay, what do you want, boy? Do you want some bacon? Do you want some uh, chicken? Do you want some steak? Woof, says the dog. Okay, steak. Do you want half a pound? Do you want a pound? Do you want two pounds? Woof says the dog, two pounds, okay. And so he gets two pounds of steak ready, wraps it all up, gives it to the dog. The dog sticks its muzzle into the purse and pulls out the right amount of cash and puts it up on the counter and walks out. Now, there's a guy standing there who cannot believe what he has just seen. He says, this is the most amazing animal I've ever seen in my life. And so he follows him out of the store. 
And he goes down the road and he goes da- into this apartment complex. And the man follows him up to the third floor. When he gets up to the third floor, the dog stops at a door and starts scratching on the door. And finally, after a couple of minutes of scratching at the door, the door opens up and the dog's owner is there. And the owner starts yelling at his dog. Oh, you are incompetent. You are such a dumb dog. And the man who's sitting there watching goes, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Why are you yelling? Why are you berating this dog? This is the most intelligent creature I've ever seen in my entire life. The owner says, intelligent? This is the third time this week he's forgot his keys. (laughs) You ever feel like that? You see something amazing, you see something wonderful, you see something that's, that's, that's just awe-inspiring, and yet there's no thankfulness. This week is Thanksgiving, and I want to talk about giving thanks today. I want us to turn our Bibles to Psalm 100 that we saw at the video at the beginning of this service, Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5. It says this, a psalm for giving thanks. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. In the psalm, we see three things about thankfulness. Number one, and that is the invitation of thanksgiving. That thankfulness is an invitation. Thanksgiving is a time that we set aside to give thanks to God for all that he's done for us. In Canada, it became an official holiday back in, on Thursday, January the 31st of 1957, when the Canadian Parliament proclaimed that Thanksgiving was to be, and I quote, a day of general thanksgiving to Almighty God for the bountiful harvest with which Canada has been blessed. Parliament's changed a little bit since then, I know. But from the beginning, we see that Thanksgiving's focus was God. It was an invitation for the nation to come, for the people of this nation to come and give thanks to God for all that he's done for us. This psalm says in verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. That whole idea of enter in. It's an invitation. It's an invitation. God invites us in. God never pushes his way into our lives. God does not force himself upon us. God stands at the door and he knocks. And if we open the door, then he comes in. But it's an invitation. We're the ones who have to invite him in. God has invited us to come. God has invited us into his presence. But will we do it? Back uh, in 1990 when I was in seminary, a friend gave me a a tape from uh, an old band called Crumbacher Duke called Worlds Away. And on that tape there was a song, The Last Time. And it said this. And to this day I remember these lyrics and, and they often are in my mind. And was the last time you heard from me the last I heard from you? Does my lack of inspiration mean you're blue from silence? Can it really be that the last time that you heard from me was the last time I heard from you? Oh, how long since the last time? And basically that's God saying, is the only, you know, I have showered you with so many blessings. I have poured such blessings on your life. And yet, was the last time you heard from me, the last time you had anything to be thankful for when you gave thanksgiving? And the answer, of course, is no. That God is always showering us with blessings. That God, we have so much to be thankful for. 
and yet how seldom we actually come and thank him for all that he's given to us. Of course, a message that's often preached around Thanksgiving is that story of the ten lepers in Luke 17. Verse 11 says, now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. And he was, he was going into a village. Ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out, Master, have pity on us. Then when he saw them, he said, go show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. In faith, these ten lepers call out to Jesus. And as they go in faith, they're healed. Nine of them just take their healing. I'm sure they had lots of things to do. We have no idea of how long these people had suffered. We don't know how long... You know, these people had, had been alienated, had been outcast, rejected by society. I'm sure they had loved ones I wanted to reunite with. I'm sure that there was things that they had to do, things that they'd been dreaming of for so, so, so very long. And finally, now they were healed. They were able to go do it. And in the midst of all of that, one of them decides to go back and say thank you. And before we are too harsh on these nine, may I remind us that we are so very much like them because we have been given so much. We have been healed of so much. We have been forgiven of so much. We have been given so much. And yet how often we fail to return to God and thank him for what we've received. Vance Havner once said it this way, our biggest problem in the church today is the vast majority of Sunday morning Christians who claim to have known the Master's cure but do not return to thank Him by presence, prayer, testimony, and support of His church. In fact, the whole Christian life is one big thank you, the living expression of our gratitude to God for His goodness. But we take Him for granted, and what we take for granted, we never take seriously. How about you? God invites us to come. God invites us to come. Will we return to say thank you, Lord, to give thanks for all that we have, the invitation of thanksgiving, number one. But number two is the motivation of thanksgiving. What motivated the psalmist to enter in and to give thanks? Well, it says here that it was God's character, it was God's conduct, it was God's love and faithfulness that he had experienced through the years. In verse 5, he says, For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And what motivated the psalmist was, is what motivates us today. It's God's character. It's God's love. It's God's compassion. It's how God has been good to each one of us. All that we've ha received what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Is it just a time to hang out with family and eat turkey? Is that what it means? The roots of Thanksgiving go back much farther than when it became a national holiday in 1957. I think most of us know kind of the history of North America, that first recorded Thanksgiving going back to 1621, when the Plymouth colonists and Native Americans shared an autumn harvest festival. I'm sure that you've heard that story, but let me just retell it to you again. It was back in 1605 that a Native American man by the name of Squanto, from a village in what is now Massachusetts, met his first white man. He later traveled to England with the explorer named John Weymouth. In England, for three years, he had many adventures. He saw many wonderful things. He began to learn the English language. And after three years, he was returned on a boat back to his native homeland. But upon his return, he met another Englishman 
a man by the name of Thomas Hunt. And Thomas Hunt captured Squanto, along with a number of other Native Americans, and sold them into slavery in Spain. There was a Spanish monk who bought Squanto and who kept him on this farm. And they began to talk and they began to know each other. And this Spanish monk actually freed him. He treated him well. He, most importantly, taught him the gospel, told him about Jesus Christ. Squanto eventually, after being freed, made his way back to England where he met a man by the name of John Slaney. Slaney was sympathetic to Squanto and so paid his passage back to North America. He eventually returned in 1618, 10 years after being taken into slavery. Imagine that. Taken from your homeland, sold into slavery. And then after 10 years, you finally come back. And what did he find when he got back? His entire village was dead of smallpox brought by the English. Sold into slavery. Your entire village killed off by a disease brought to you by these white men. Fast forward a couple of years when the pilgrims came over on the Mayflower, landing in Plymouth, Massachusetts. They had that first harsh winter. Of the 102 pilgrims, only 47 survived. And that spring, out of the woods walks Squanto. And he makes friends with these pilgrims. He teaches them how to build warmer houses he teaches them how and when to plant the corn. He helps them in trade negotiations with all of the, the different Native Americans that were in that area. He lived with them, and he served them, and he helped them. These people that had taken him into slavery, had killed off his tribe with smallpox, he became the picture of reconciliation, the picture of forgiveness. It was just a few years later that he died. Governor William Bradford wrote this, that Squanto fell ill of Indian fever, bleeding much at the nose, and within a few days he died. Just before he died, he begged the governor to pray for him, that he was looking forward to heaven, and that he bequeathed several of his things to his English friends as remembrances. His death was a great loss. A guy that was transformed. The forgiveness and the love that he had received in Jesus Christ, he took and he reflected back upon everyone that he came into contact with. Instead of holding bitterness in his heart, instead of holding resentment, he showed the love of Jesus to the people around him. And that really is a picture of what thanksgiving means. It's recognizing God's goodness in our love and reflecting that love and expressing that love and incarnating as Jesus was incarnate, incarnating the love of Christ and taking it and expressing it to the communities around us. That's what motivates us. That's the reason behind it. The invitation, the motivation, and the celebration of thanksgiving. Psalm 100 starts saying, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. How do you respond to God's faithfulness? How do you respond to all the goodness and the grace and the mercy that we have received? Well, there's three important verbs here. Three important verbs that we need to look after. The first is that word shout. Express it. <laughs> Don't hold back. Don't hold it in. 
Don't just think, well, you know, I'll let someone else praise the Lord. I'll let someone else worship the Lord. Shout it out. Respond by giving thanks. Declare God's goodness aloud. That first Thanksgiving was recorded by a, a pilgrim by the name of Edward Winslow in 1621, one of the 47 people that survived. He wrote this, Our harvest of corn came in well, and God be praised we had a good increase in Indian corn, and barley crop was also good. Once our harvest was brought in, our governor sent four men out to hunt fowl in order that we might have a special celebration, rejoicing together over the fruit of our labors. Those four hunters in one day killed enough fowl to feed our company for almost a week. And we were joined in our celebration by many Indians who joined us for three days of entertainment and feasting. They themselves went out and killed five deer, which they brought. Although our harvest may not always be so plentiful as it was with us this time, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish you could be partakers of our plenty. Tremendous words. Listen to those words again. By the goodness of God, we are so far from want. Is that your testimony as well this morning? By the goodness of God, we are so far from want. That God has given us so much the roofs over our heads, heating and sometimes cooling in our homes, uh, you know, food in our refrigerator, family around us, health. We are so far from want. We have received so much. And if you look at the world around us, you consider that Sitting in this room today, we are at the very top of the economic food chain. I don't care how poor you feel you are in this room this morning. We have more than the vast majority of the world, the billions of people in the world around us. We are far from want. So let's declare God's goodness. Let's shout it out. Let's thank God for all that he's given to us. Let's share that testimony. The second that we see in this is the word worship. We come passionately expressing our hearts in response to God's goodness. Romans 12, 1 says, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercies, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. The key word there is offer. This is what we do. We come and we offer ourselves to God. Our spiritual act of worship. The spiritual act of worship, spiritual in the original language is logikos, which means it's our logical act of worship. In other words, in light of all God has done for us, it is logical. It makes sense that we would return that to God. Worship is simply loving God back. God loved us, and we love him back. And it's logical. It makes sense. It's the right and natural response to people who have been given so much, who have been so greatly blessed. The third word was no. That we experience God's goodness in a real, in a living way. The word, the Hebrew word, yada. No does not mean that intellectually we understand that God is good. That intellectually we understand, yes, God is pretty nice. The word yada goes much deeper. It's used in Genesis 4.1 to say that Adam knew his wife. <laughs> now, did Adam know his wife in an intellectual way? It means something much deeper than that, right? That they experienced one another. That we yada, that we understand, that we know God in a deep way, in a profound way, in an experiential way in a heart-to-heart -heart sort of way that we know God's love and we know God's mercy. There's a lot of things to be thankful for. A lot of things to be thankful for. This weekend, 
Will you just take some time and do that? Just thank God. Whatever you want to do as a family, sit around the table, come up with one thing that you're thankful for. But make sure the focus is God. Because God ultimately is the one who has given us all these things. Take time to do it. Look, if the Canadian government is willing to give us a day to do it. And let's face it, the Canadian government sometimes does stuff that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But they got this one right. And so can we celebrate that? <laughs> Spend time with family. Enjoy your food. Enjoy your time together. But let's make sure our focus is where it needs to be. Not necessarily just on the people that are around us or the food that's in us. But on the God who gave us it all. I grew up in Sarnia. Went to Arrow Road Public School. And uh, in the back of our um, schoolyard, there was this these trees and there was all this sand. And one of the things that we loved to do as kids during recess was that we would bring magnets with us to school. And we would take the magnets out and we would drag the magnets through the sand. And when you drag the magnet through the sand, you would lift it up and there'd be iron ore, that little particles that you couldn't see in the sand. But as you drag the magnet through it, all those little particles would stick to the magnet. And then you'd you know, brush, and we, we had this thing going of, you know, who can collect the most iron ore? Yeah, kids. You know, it was in the day before cell phone and internet. Come on. What else was there to do? But I came across this quote years ago by Henry Ward Beecher. If one should give me a dish of sand and tell me that there were particles of iron in it, I might look for them with my eyes and search for them with my clumsy fingers and be unable to detect them. But let me take a magnet and sweep through it now and it would draw to itself the almost invisible particles by the mere power of attraction. This is the point. The unthankful heart like my finger in the sand discovers no mercies. But let the thankful heart sweep through the day. And as the magnet finds the iron, so it will find in every hour some heavenly blessings. Only the iron in God's sand is gold. That as we go through life, let's not be like an unthankful heart which kind of picks up clumps of sand and says, I don't see any iron ore in there but like a thankful heart drags through the sand and a try, and it just finds reasons to be thankful, always looking for reasons to be thankful. We have reasons to be thankful here this morning, amen? For our families, for our church, for the work that's happening, so many reasons to be thankful. God has been so very good. Let's take time this weekend to tell him that. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much, Lord, for all that you've given to us. And Father, there are so many reminders of those reasons to be thankful that are here in this room with us this morning. But Lord, yes, we recognize that life is tough. We recognize, Lord, that in life there will be many challenges. And yet, Lord, you have sustained us. We're thankful, Lord, for your love. We're thankful, Lord, for your salvation. We're thankful, Lord, for the heaven that awaits us when one day we leave this earth. We're so thankful, Lord, for the community that you've given to us. For all the physical things, yes, but all of the wonderful spiritual blessings that we have. All the promises in your word that are real and that are living for each one of us. So, Father, help us. This day set aside, this one day in the year,
to remind us, Lord, to remember you and to be thankful for all that you've given to us. Let's not be like those other nine lepers who just went and had so many other things to do, so many good, legitimate reasons to go. But let's make it a priority to return and to give thanks. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we conclude our service, we'd like to invite you to sing a song with us that we've presented a few times as part of our communion times and on Good Friday. As a worship team, we love to sing it, and it's a song of great praise and thanksgiving for the sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf so that we could be redeemed through him. So please stand and join with us with strong voices as we sing, Thank You, Jesus, for the Blood. Wow. 
Now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and grant you his peace. God bless you. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week. Thank you.